everybody always wants to see new teams join NASCAR. So here's a list of five that should. So news broke last week that IndyCar is getting a new team, and a really good team at that. Prima will be joining the ranks of IndyCar in 2025. They have a stout and proven track record in Europe of being one of the best development programs in the world. And they've got ties with Ferrari, they've turned out a number of Formula One drivers, and now they're coming to IndyCar, which is great. IndyCar needs more big names like that. And then it got me thinking, well... If they're getting a new name, maybe NASCAR should get a new name. So who are five people that we would like to see join NASCAR? Now, these are just teams that are already represented in motorsports. They're good at what they do currently, and they don't feel NASCAR teams, or at least haven't in a while. So starting off the list, at number one is McLaren, because why not? Spread a little bit of that papaya in blue and black and white and whatever other colors they've decided are now theirs, and put that in the NASCAR crowd. Fans in NASCAR love bright colors, and papaya is a color that they would absolutely adore. So go ahead and do that. They already have a great relationship with General Motors and Hendrick Motorsports, so they could become a Chevy team, or at least buy into an existing Chevy team. They're already like the Rick Ware Racing of motorsports. They're kind of involved in everything. They're in Formula One, IndyCar, Formula E, Extreme E, and they have aspirations of joining WEC and doing some endurance stuff as well. So just add NASCAR onto the list there. And honestly... NASCAR joining the roster isn't the craziest thing ever, especially not in the era of the Gen 7 car along with the charters. Yeah, getting a charter would be certainly difficult, and obviously this is all hypothetical, so let's not even talk about charters right now, because that's no fun. At the end of the day, they could join. It would be interesting. They're 12-time Formula 1 driver champions, 8-time constructor champions in Formula 1. They have four IndyCar wins since taking over schmidt Peterson. Motorsport, they have one Formula E win and three Extreme E podiums. So while they do have this storied career and history in Formula One, the rest of their stuff is kind of eh, mediocre at this point. Good news, they just signed a deal with Hoka, which apparently is going to be Papaya Hoka's out there. So you can get those if you're into running. Either way, them joining the series would be great. It would give Formula One fans, all the drive to survive girlies and fanboys, something else to cheer for in NASCAR, right? You can get Lando Norris doing a collaboration. Uh, it's just so great and perfect and everything that goes along with it. But it would be pretty cool to see McLaren join NASCAR. This is not Ron Dennis's McLaren anymore. They are seemingly doing more fun things over there. And Zach Brown kind of wants to expand the McLaren name across all motorsport. As much as I do miss the Ron Dennis era of... McLaren, this new McLaren certainly is much more involved. The Ron Dennis McLaren won a lot more, though. So, you know, pick your side here. So, number one starting off the list is McLaren. Number two on the list is a name that everybody's already talked about. That would be Andretti Global. Michael Andretti, Andretti formerly known as Andretti Autosport. Not like Prince, they just changed their name. They did not go to a symbol. The artist formerly known as Andretti Autosport. If Formula One doesn't want his billions of dollars, NASCAR instead will take them. And all of his backers from Guggenheim, as well as Dan Tauris from Gamebridge. Speaking of Gamebridge, right now, you're probably like, that name sounds familiar. Of course it does, because they're the biggest primary sponsor over at Spire on the number 7 and 77 cars of Corey LaJoy and of Carson Hosovar. There's been long rumors that Andretti will eventually buy into Spire. It'll be, you know, Andretti Spire, Spire Andretti, something along those lines. Think a lot about, like, what he did with Wayne Taylor Racing, and now it just becomes Andretti Wayne Taylor Racing, Andretti WTR, whatever they want to refer to it as now on the IMSA side of things. That's what I think will eventually happen on the NASCAR side of things. And they, of course, already have a good relationship with General Motors. They have a good relationship with Spire, My, uh, Marco Andretti rather, made some starts already with Gamebridge sponsorship on his cars at Spire in the truck series, so it would make a lot of sense. Andretti Global, they're involved in everything. If McLaren's the Rick Ware Racing Motorsports, Andretti truly is the Rick Ware Racing of Motorsport. Andretti Global is involved in IndyCar, IMSA, Formula E, Extreme E, and Australian Supercars, as well as Indy NXT, as well as USF 2000. They used to be are they try they're trying to be involved in Formula One, except Formula One is being too elitist and too pretentious for it. They have six Indianapolis 500 victories, four IndyCar championships, a Formula E championship, along with various other championships from smaller series that some people have probably forgotten about at this point, like Rallycross and other things like that. They're a force to be reckoned with. On the, in the general landscape of motorsport. Andretti's name carries a ton of weight, regardless of what Formula One says. Having him join NASCAR 
whether that's buying into Spire or starting up his own team, coming in with Honda, something like that, would be massive for the sport. There's a ton of brand recognition with that name. Again, contrary to what Formula One believes, an dready name carries brand recognition. Him joining the sport, good for everybody. Moving on to another team that should join NASCAR that isn't here already that you probably haven't thought about would be Triple Eight Engineering. And you're probably sitting back going, Matt, who the heck is Triple Eight Engineering? Well, you have to wake up in the middle of the night to know who this is because they are the best team in Australian supercars. It's where Shane Van Gisbergen came from. We'll get to more of that in a second. They are the force down there. They're the Red Bull of Australian supercars. They're, well, they do have Rebel sponsorship, so that actually works out pretty well. In terms of dominance, that's what I mean. They're the Hendrick Motorsports of the Australian supercars series. They need to come over and do NASCAR as well, because why not? The rest of the supercar grid seems like they want to come over here and race. Why not just bring a team over as well? 10-time driver champions, 11-time team champions, 10-time winners of the Bathurst 1000, a battle between Ford, a battle between Chevy. At some point, a race breaks out, and generally it seems like Triple Eight will be standing at the top step of the podium. They have deep General Motors ties. They were the Holden factory team. Now they're the factory Chevy team fielding a Camaro, which actually looks like a Camaro. Plus, Roland Dane, who used to be the team's majority owner. He now owns 11% in the team. His daughter is Shane Van Gisbergen's partner. Perfect tie-in. They come over here. SVG joins up with them. It's just a big old happy family. His partner, she does currently own a minority stake in Triple Eight Engineering as well. Just putting all of that out there. It would be really cool to see them come over and race in NASCAR. Whether that's partnering with an existing team, buying an existing team, something like that. They are a force down under and in other places as well when they used to try to take Australian supercars outside of Australia and New Zealand. They ran a race at Coda. I believe they did a race in the Middle East at one point. Whatever. They're a force. And if they came over here, it would be highly entertaining. The number 88 car. They would have to take that number. Because that's like their number. Triple Eight, right? Whatever. Moving on. Triple Eight can't come over. We'll pivot to another team that has deep General Motors size. That would be Pratt & Miller. Obviously a longtime partner of General Motors. They have fielded the Corvette factory program and taken them to wins at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, Daytona 24, Sebring 12 Hour, and various other races around the world. They know exactly what they're doing. They're rumored to be wanting to start an IndyCar team. Doesn't seem like that's going to happen now that two of those engine allocations from Chevrolet went over to Prema but maybe it could. Who knows what their plans are at the end of the day. They're good people over there. They're proven winners. I mean, at the end of the day, they're absolutely proven winners. They have deep General Motors ties, and they obviously know how to win. So have them come over and join, or link up with another existing team, or something along those lines. And then last but not least, a team that has already been in NASCAR and failed in the most embarrassing fashion ever would be Red Bull Racing. And I say embarrassing fashion because they pumped a ton of money into this program and they couldn't do anything. Two wins, one with Brian Vickers at Michigan, another one with Casey Kane at Phoenix in their penultimate race as a team. They did everything wrong. And honestly, they may have just been a step ahead of their time in terms of activations and everything that they were already doing. Unfortunately, when Red Bull came over, they couldn't really convince any big time drivers to join. Brian Vickers was their big signing and Hendrick Motorsports and everybody else was like, all right, fucking take him. Sorry for cussing. Go ahead and take him out of here. So they did, and they struggled really bad. They put A.J. Allmendinger in the car. He failed to qualify for a lot of races to start off. So then they put Mike Skinner in the car because that's a logical answer. Uh, to your problems there. Didn't work out with him that well either. They put Scott Speed in the car because Red Bull's like, we got this guy, we own him, we don't know what to do with him. Well, let's put him in NASCAR, even though he's never driven a stock car before. And they did him at ARCA, and he decided to ruin the championship and hand it to Justin Allgaier because he and Ricky Stenhouse got into a pissing match in Toledo. Didn't work out well for either of them. So, Red Bull, come back to NASCAR. The Gen 7 car is much better more conducive to being competitive out of the box, right? Uh, they're not going to struggle the same way that they did when they came in during the Car of Tomorrow era and the old Gen 4 era, essentially. Yeah. Have them come in. Have Red Bull come back. Their activation would work a heck of a lot better now. NASCAR is certainly doing a lot to reach out to the younger audience at this point, and you can run a two-car team kind of the way that Red Bull wants to run it, but you have to structure it and have the right people in place to do that, and maybe they can do that. Gunther Steiner 
Unemployed. Maybe you can call him up. Don't do that. Please don't do that, actually. That's a terrible decision to make. But Red Bull coming back would make a lot of sense now, not only from a marketing standpoint, but from a competition standpoint as well. They have the money to land a big-time driver. Like I said, the Gen 7 car makes it a lot easier for you to be able to go out and be competitive pretty quickly. Not like the old Gen 5 and Gen 4 cars and even Gen 6 cars. Well, no, they didn't miss that. Whatever. You know what I'm talking about. They can come out they can come in and be successful. Much more successful than they were. Call Casey Kane up. He did really well at Red Bull in his one season there while he was on hiatus from joining Hendrick Motorsports in that weird sort of um, purgatory year for him. So those are my five teams that I would like to see join NASCAR. Honorable mentions would be United Auto Sport, which is obviously one of Zach Brown's companies as well. Uh, they have deep McLaren ties, essentially. Uh, but that's his team. They currently race a lot of endurance racing, a lot of sports car stuff as well. United Auto Sport would be an interesting one. Multimatic, who partners up with kind of anybody that has a program that they need to have run. They used to run the Mazda DPI program. They currently run the Ford Mustang GTD program or GT3 program. Um, and then as well as Path Motorsports which currently fields cars in the IMSA series as well for endurance racing. They're Canadian. They want to wrap things in flannel. I'm here for it. Give me flannel race cars in NASCAR. So let me know in the comments, what teams would you like to see join NASCAR? Why is my list correct? Why is it incorrect? I'd love to hear it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.